Tonight, a News Nation Prime exclusive with the Hillsong Mega Church in crisis mode. A former leader, Jeff Bullock, known as a founding father of the church, is speaking out for the very first time, sharing his story. And that story, he says, is one of a church that has lost sight of its original mission and drove him away from his faith. And at the center of all of it is ex pastor Brian Houston, who is facing a criminal charge for covering up the child sex offenses committed by his father. A key question when did he first learn of those allegations of abuse? Tonight, Bullock says there is more to this story than we know. Here's investigative correspondent Rich McHugh. The global megachurch Hillsong, with 130 churches in 30 countries, has built an empire since its creation 40 years ago in Australia. But now its leader, Brian Houston, is facing a criminal charge for concealing his father's pedophilia and resigned from the church after reports of inappropriate behavior with two women. Now, amidst this turmoil in church leadership, an early leader of Hillsong has come forward. So it's taken me only till recently to be able to speak, speak up and speak clearly about my experiences without feeling like I'm doing something wrong. And it's quite liberating to me, to tell you the truth. Jeff Bullock, who was there at the founding of Hillsong, left the church in 1995 and has not spoken publicly about it until now. You and I have been talking for three years. It seems like you've moved on, but there is still this part of you that, that is still stuck in this thing with Hillsong? Well, yes, of course, yes, because, you know, I do have a story from those days, and the, the more that has progressed, the more I feel that I have, I have a responsibility to speak. There are a multitude of hurting people that I think I have to start the story. Bullock, along with Brian Houston, started the Hills Christian Life Center in 1983 outside of Sydney, which became Hillsong Church. The church elder, he oversaw the music and production of all services for 12 years. So you actually came up with the name Hillsong? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Brian and I were floating around in my swimming pool, and I said to Brian, I just said, let's call the music team Hillsong. And he said, why? And I said, well, it's not as goofy as Hills Christian Life Center, is it? Many of the early songs Bullock wrote became global hits. Songs like The Power of Your Love. Uh, we'd reached the world, but for me, I, I, I couldn't stay in it anymore because uh, where my faith was going, I wasn't comfortable with my faith and the culture of the church, so I left. But Bullock says that when he left Hillsong in 1995, they turned on him. I suppose it's why I'm not a Christian anymore. Brian wrote a letter to the worship pastors of all the, all the Assemblies of God churches in Australia telling them not to, to uh, sing any of my new songs. They declared war on me. I, I uh, met um, in early, the early 2000s with one of their elders, a man called Narvi Sali, and he looked at me in the eyes and he said, Jeff, you do know we tried to destroy you. And I said back to him, Narvi, why? Now, I don't remember his exact words, but it was something along the lines of, well, we thought you were going to try and destroy us. Nabi Salah, former executive chairman of Gloria Jean's Coffees, is a member of the Hillsong Global Board. He did not respond to our request for comment. When you see Hillsong Church today, what do you see? Well, I certainly don't see what we started. And this is hard to say because it's, it's going to be hard for people listening to hear these words. I don't see a lot of Jesus. It's, it's sort of like... The message has become the church. The message should be the members, but the message has become the institution. An institution, Bullock says, with a license to print money. Indeed, financial records show the church, exempt from paying income taxes, made nearly $90 million in 2020 from the Australian churches alone. Where does the money go? I mean, it's a big institution. I mean, the real estate, their audiovisual production facilities are first class. But what worries me is uh, they've got a license to print money. But what they say is, you're giving to God. Well, you're giving to God, and then God gives to, to the pastors, and it seems like, I suppose you could say, they're profiteering from it. In late March, the pastor of Hillsong Phoenix, Terry Christ, told his congregation that Hillsong leaders gave him this ultimatum. It came down in recent weeks to the demand that we sign non-disclosure agreements 
and non-competes. Meaning that if we were removed from our positions, we could not plant churches again within our community for at least one year. Why is the church asking its members to sign non-disclosure agreements? Because the church is more important than its members. I mean, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, here is a, a church that's a worldwide phenomenon. Why do they get people to disguise, to sign non-disclosure agreements? Because they're scared? Today, Brian Houston is facing criminal charges for concealing his father's sexual abuse of children. You certainly knew that there were that very serious allegations had been made against your father. Yes, I did. Brian Houston categorically denies knowing any claims of sexual abuse by his father before 1999. But Bullock says that Houston knew of allegations about his father years earlier, that allegations from a 23-year-old male victim of his father published in the Sydney Morning Herald in 2006 were actually known a decade earlier. The victim in the story, in training to be a pastor, described gay conversion counseling sessions with the elder Houston as, quote, nothing more than sexual abuse. Frank performed rituals with him to try and cure him, cure him of his homosexual leadings. This was deviant behavior. But unfortunately, the story was known about in the early 90s by a few senior members uh, of what was then the Assemblies of God. And I know that because I knew about it. Bullock says Brian Houston told him about the allegations himself before he left Hillsong in 1995. Brian called me into his office and uh, told me of accusations made against his father of deviant sexual behavior disguised as gay conversion therapy with the young man. And this senior, senior ministers, senior pastors in the AOG in New South Wales, Wales knew about it as well. Can I tell you that, how hard that is to say? And it really does make me shake. And so there you go, there's the truth. Neither Brian Houston nor Hillsong Church has responded to our request for comment. And Rich McHugh joining us live tonight. Rich, it took decades um, for him to come out and speak and years for you to convince Bullock to do so. Some may be wondering, uh, hearing what he has to say, if he has an ax to grind, what is his motivation for talking now? I don't believe he has an ax to grind, Marnie. I, I've been speaking to him for a number of years and he's been terrified to come forward and he's a very emotional guy and I think he finally decided yes he was going to speak once once Brian Houston resigned from the church a little over a month ago he felt you know it's safe enough to come forward he knows there's all these people he said it himself there's all these people inside the church who are hurting he's still looked up to as a leader and he feels that it's important for him to be heard. Rich, he's also critical of the church's focus on growth, on money, on its original mission. How did he envision all those years ago the future of the church, what it would become? Because churches are businesses to some degree. They are out there to expand membership, to, to make money for people to tithe and for the church to grow. Well, he said when they started it, it was the Hills Christian Life Center. It was fun. It wasn't muscular as, he, as what he calls it is today. Um, they, they never ha dreamed that it would become this big. But he said now he looks at it and he says, uh, there's all these people inside this church believing that they're expanding you know, God's kingdom when in fact they're just expanding the, the institution that it's become, the focus has become on the institution instead of uh, the Christianity involved. Right, instead of a focus on God, which is the point. Um, Houston is facing criminal right. charges. That's the other layer to all of this. Could Bullock speaking out um, at all impact those proceedings? It's unclear, Marnie. I mean, I have to, I should say for the record that the, the allegations that we are talking about in this story are, are were, were not a minor. The person, the victim was 23 at the time, so it's a little bit like apples and oranges, but there is some concern that this could affect the case in Australia that is still playing out. So it, it's, it's truly unclear. I'm not a lawyer, but um, I know that Jeff was weighing this tremendously before saying it. And he, he didn't make this decision lightly, but he, he did so 
knowing full well the ramifications. Well, I know you've been spending years working on the case, talking to Jeff in communication with those at the highest levels to understand what is happening uh, with this global megachurch at this point, embroiled right now, uh, seemingly in a pretty big crisis. Um, Rich, as always, thank you. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.